for this morning, but really to allow us to be in this space, the space that you have created uh, for each and every one of us, Lord. We know that by purpose, we are all here and we mahalo you for this time, Lord. And when we talk about time, we talk about um, this, this time, this pivotal time that we are a big part of in being uh, leaders, in, not only for our own peers and ourselves as a team, but also for our Reiki, Lord. We know that that is a key piece. And again, purposefully, you have placed us here yeah, to do this good work. And so we mahalo you again for that. We thank you for all of the leaders that are sitting around this table for where, whence they've come from and the people that support them. We know, Lord, that we don't do this alone and that with you, all things are possible and you provide us that support that stands right beside us hand in hand as we move forward to do this good work. We mahalo you for um, our founder who with her vision, uh, again, you know, through education, made it real uh, for all of us. And again, in this time, here we are in this space. So we just thank you for all of those key pieces, Lord. Um, and as we gather here today in our first Covella 2021 high school staff meeting, we just ask that you be in the center of all of our thinking, help us to kuka kuka and, and, and to gather all that we need to have that's been planned for us uh, and allow us to interact, engage and be one as we move forward. We, we ask for your presence uh, to be with us in, in voice, in laughter, in keeping our stomachs satisfied so that the brain work continues. And then when we're Paul Lord, you know, continue to be with us wherever it is that we need to be and whatever we need to do until we gather again. All these things, Lord, we ask in your precious name. Amen. So I just wanted to, um, Alana, first of all, um, just bless that Alana is uh, where she is and doing what she's doing. Um, mahalo nui to all of you for taking on, uh, once again, Covella 2021. Most of you are returning uh, to this summer work, um, and some of you are brand new to it. Um, and I've also heard, yeah, what have I gotten myself into kind of expressions. Nonetheless, like I shared, you know, I, I'm a firm believer that we all are um, in the places that we are for good, real purposes. And so mahalo nui to all of you for taking on um, that aloha to continue on the good work uh, that has been set forward uh, by Halau Kupu Kupu for us as we move now into this Kovela 2021. And Kovela 2021 really came out of the mana'o of Halau Kupu Kupu now taking the stance um, as in serving our K-12 program across the board and not just focusing on and moving through the work through our summer program, but to now yeah, embed it within the whole K-12 program. Um, and so Pavela 2021 then became and moved out of that Halau Kupu line. Uh, Pavela 2021, literally summer 2021. We thought by now we would have a name in Inoa uh, for ourselves. Uh, and didn't want to rush into it and decided that we will allow the summer yeah, to kokua us in birthing this name and really what it should be as we move forward. Unlike all other summers, this is a different summer um, because of COVID. And so we knew that we wanted to continue and as much as possible uh, keeping safety at the forefront that we wanted to, and needed to bring kids back on campus. And so with that, Covella 2021 became a program this summer to restore what our children have missed all these months being away you know, from campus. And so safely you know, being a first and, and uh, priority, uh, bringing our kids back, but at half density you know, um, here on campus and only our KS kids. So really that was the purpose of restoring what they missed and doing it safely. And so because of your aloha, we continue to do that in high school. We mahalo kum lehua for continuing to work with you through the year in gathering those who were still interested in uh, being a part of this so that we could move forward and then transitioning it over to Kovella 2021. 
And so that's really where we're at. And I'm just blessed again that all of you, yeah, through education, yeah, through education, recognizing that education will allow us to tip the scales of inequity, to empower our people and to restore social justice. And really the aloha, all of that coming directly from the heart of our princess. And we become the conduits of that movement. Yeah? What we do yeah, and how we do it and really why we do it yeah, with our children. And so excited about all of the courses that have been uh, designed for this in our high school level, excited what this all move, means as we move forward with our OED edge pathway of how we do things, but really as it ties back to the why. Yeah? An OED edge pathway, uh, providing a kauhale, keeping the child at the center, knowing our mo'olelo, our narrative, the why behind and understanding yeah, to inform us of what we need to do and inform our children, yeah, to provide them that kind of grounding. And then the na'awau, yeah, the o'ivi edgeness to take all that we understand and understanding that kuleana and moving it forward. And so mahalo again. I can't thank you enough for being those people to do that with our children and to help all of us as we all learn and move forward. A special maha, uh, mahalo to, uh, to Aulani and Jan, our Alau Kavai team, who are here today with us to again, yeah, move us through yeah, this uh, pathway that has been designed not only for the regular school year, but also through the summer. And what a joy and beauty it is that we can continue that you know, 12 months out of the year for the benefit of our Kiki. And so with that, turn you over to your, fear, your fearless leader who is just um, amazing. And, um, but know that we are here to support all of you in whatever way we can, um, from the little Pringle containers to whatever it is that we need for our Kiki. We love you. Mahalo Nui. Mahalo Lisan, and those are full full blown Pringles containers that um, go all in my mouth because they're wonderful. I I moved uh, I transitioned from like an adult back to like my childhood eating Pringles and popping the cans. So thank you for all the goodies. Anyway, um, thank you for opening up um, Calvella twenty twenty one with us. Uh, so fortunate to have you as that um, guidance throughout this setup and really setting the stage for this summer. Super excited to be part of Calvella 2021 to see where this is going after you know this transition year. So mahalo. Um, is Kumulehua ready? Always ready. Yeah, mahalo for, for um, providing us with kind of like the vision for what um, what's to come and you know the reasons why we're all here this morning. Mahalo. Can you guys hear me? Can? Mm -hmm. Mahalo Nui. Um, and again, mahalo to Alana and, and again your leadership this year. Alana is so my kai under Lizanne's department, you know, and again we're working as a team to ensure that you know what we're trying to do with Calvella. Um, is is a linkage. It's almost kind of like a, a, a third semester, yeah. Especially for us at the high school, as things change and things evolve and and, and things shift, and, and we've been experiencing that for the past fourteen months. It's not going to stop. I think many of the things that we're doing now is 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 clearly needed because of the space and the time that we're in. And so, with that, I send my aloha out to Lizanne and to Alana. And now to the Kumus and for your folks' guidance and, and, and navigating through these times, you know, and, and know that the, the space and time may not fully bring back the, uh, the, the amount of kids that we wanted. However, it is the, the place that we are in now. But I, I think at this time, you know, Kathy Short reminded me, you know, and I was, you know, Kathy Short is to me is the guru of inquiry method, methodology. You know, and I was fortunate to be able to be trained under her back in the 90s about how the many sizes fits many and there's no such thing as a one size fits all. And I've said that many times, but it's not me. It was actually Kathy Short that said that. So I took credit for a lot of her work. Um, but it's important for us to, to understand that um, this is the time to do that. You know? And I think about, 
I think about my my dad. Yeah, my dad, and who taught us how to love by eye and fish and crab net and set net and throw net and cross net and all of those things. And he used to always take a look at the cow vela time because cow vela time is our time to go fishing. So we always left the house. They, we we camp down at Puhi Bay or, or Kula Pai or down the Leivi side, and we would do that every single summer for years. And the, one thing that he says is to try something new. Yeah, and when he said that, is that you take your net and you try to look at the low papa, the reefs, and maybe you, you set your net from one low papa to this low papa and see how that works. No work, then you try another low papa. And you always have to innovate and try to create and try to stop because that says, just try something new. Try to do it over there. Try to do it over there. You know, and so we, we always did that. And I think Calvella is the time to try things out. I'm going to take you to um, some of the slides, yeah? Um, can I have host? Yeah, am I hosting? Yeah, I think I'm hosting. Hold on. Yeah, got you. All right. Bum, bum, bum. I think I only have like 15 minutes. So I'm going to go through this, but I'm going to make sure that, that Sister Alana has <laughs> the, the slides for you folks. Okay, I'm going to share again. Alamayo. So Alana wanted me to, to, to share about, you know, well, well, how does this connect to the regular school year? And of course, you know, in this time, you know, like I mentioned with the senior class, the parents senior class on Thursday night, you know, I got to come up with a plan A, then we also have to have a weather plan and then you have to have a pivot plan, yeah, depending on where it is for commencement, you know, and then for this, you know, I consider this kind of like a, a plan, yeah, and wherever it may be comes come July, August, it really is dependent upon what's happening within our, our entire county, and if it's not an entire world. Yeah, and so I'm sure you you see the he kauhale, he kauhale. Yeah, and so he kauhale, he kauhale is basically a village is a village, but it's the people within the village that makes it what it is. Yeah, it's a function of the individual, it's the utility of what we do within the in the village to make sure that everybody kind of knows. And we kind of walk through that where we tell Pori Tangaro. Yeah. And I shared this as well, you know, because when we take a look at different kauhales. You know, and I'm, I'm fortunate to have been part of the, the one on Kaho Olave and then the one on, on there was one out in Pipikeo side. And then when the, when the Edith Kanakole Foundations um, was in charge of the WIPSI conference across the, the Civic Auditorium, they, they built those, those hale, those, those hale. Um, and I, I laugh because it was kind of tedious, yeah, because we were working day and night just to get those hale up. But then I think about the, the different components, and there's multiple components. Yeah, when you take a look at a different kind of hale, yeah. And I shared this. I shared this with uh, with Mr. Chewy's math class because as he was going through his indigenous cultural connectedness with math, yeah. And so I tried to do this, and then it kind of like fell upon different things. Um, and I, I share this point because there's, I'm going to just bring up four major points yeah, here, even though there's different, you can see by the picture, there's four different, there's many, many different components and variables of a hale. But, you know, for, for, for this presentation, you know, I'm going to bring up four. One is the kahua, one is the pohana, one is the kaula, and then the pili. Yeah, we call it pili, Maui people call it ako. Um, but I'm going to bring this up and what are, those, what are those four components, yeah? The first one is the pohana itself, yeah? And when we talk about the pohana, we're talking about the main post, yeah? And it could be an analogy or a metaphor of a person or something that is the, 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 the main component of that drives um, something forward, yeah? And, and, and even if you move the main post, does the hale stay together, yeah? And then I think I look at the, the, the foundation and many of our, um, our hale, you know, as, as in, in, the, in, in 2000, I think it was maybe four or five, you know, one of the, the summer school programs that I used to run with um, Queen Newark County Children's Center, you know, took us around the island and we studied about 15 different um, heao and hale, yeah, that were, that were around our island. And then when we take a look at the foundational component, it really depends on what the hale is meant for. And so, I'm, so the, the foundation of where the hale sits upon, because every single rock is placed with intention. Every single rock is placed with a function. Yeah. And so, okay, kahua mamua mahope ke kukulu. Yeah. Always the foundation first, after is the is the building of the hale. Yeah. So 
again, going back to the pohana, the pohana is the main post, the kahua is, is, is the foundation of which it sits. I, I, I love the ulehala. I won't go into the definition of ulehala. However, the ulehala is an aerial root. Yeah. And so if you look on down, you see my arrow? Yes. So this is the ulehala. So the ulehala is that one that's not stuck in the ground. And so if you were to cut the ulehala and pound, 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 you were able to strip and then you can actually make rope yeah, out of that. That's what we use for lashings for the, the different the different the different parts of the, uh, the 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 pieces yeah of the hale itself and so ule hale is probably the only one I've ever worked with in terms of making rope yeah and so ule hale is 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 tedious together but that's the lashing that's the lashing that keeps things together so you have the pohana the 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 the, the main post that keeps the, the structure together you have the foundational piece yeah, in terms of where um, what it sits on, in terms of what is the, the things that are non-negotiable pieces. And then you have the ule halat that kind of ties things together. Yeah? And then the last one I, I take a look at, and even though there were di there are different um, kinds of pili, and I talk about pili, I'm talking about thatching itself. Yeah, we've, we've used la'i before, and not green la'i, of course, it's gonna be brown la'i, and we gather that and we bunch it up, and then we kind of layer it on top the, for the thatching. And the ones that we're not most, um, we know most of is that of Pili, yeah? I, I have never worked with Pili, only on Kaho Olave, but I'm never the one to put it on top, um, but I'm able to bunch it. And then Hala is my, probably my favorite, yeah? But no matter what, the intention of, of things on top of the Hale also is important. So if I walk into a Hale and I know it's La'i, then I know that it's a place of, of safety. I know it's a place, and that's only my, my interpretation, my, my feeling of what that is. And if it's a pili, then of course the pili, when, when, whoever goes under it, you know, there's a sense of, of cohesiveness, of collaboration that occurs. And for hala, it's not necessarily that of passing, but also I think it's also a sense of, of our historical genealogical connection to our past. Yeah, so if I take a look at what kind of thatching it is, I kind of have an understanding, okay, this is where I'm feeling when I'm walking into a hala. Yeah, and so I go back again to the four. Yeah, so you have your 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 pohana, you have your um, your kahua, your pili, and then you have your your kaula. Yeah, the, the the lashings in itself. Every single one of that is important in holding the kauhale together. And as we move into next school year, and I, and that's a long way to kind of share about what Alana wanted me to tell you guys about. Is about well, what does it look like for next school year? For me, it's about strengthening the kauhale, yeah. And that's not strengthening the kauhale in terms of the curricular instructional component as well, but also the cohesiveness and the concerted effort that everybody needs to kind of have, whether it's in department or as a as a uh, high school member of hundred two members, in order for really kind of make us kind of move in in a, in a nice um, fashion. Yeah, and so when you take a look, and I always also do believe, and so I did this thing with my brother and my my toots, my my niece that lives with me, and then so I kind of went through these things, and I and I and I said, okay, you sit there, and I said, if you were to describe who I am, as a pohana, as a kahua, as a kaula, or as a pili, I want you to write on a piece of paper. So they had a piece of paper. And so I want you to think, is there one, because we can, depend on even the, the issue or, or the circumstance, yeah, we can cross off four of them. Every single one of you have the time, are in a position where you can be the pohana. Every single one of you can be the foundational component. Every single one of you can bring things together like the lashing. Every single one of you yeah, are able to really provide that shelter of care and aloha. And so I asked my brother and my toots, okay, write it down and I'm going to write it down. And so I'm writing down what I think is my strongest component. And then my toots and my brother kind of wrote on their stuff and I say, okay, one, two, three, and we show. And so one, two, three, show. And then if I were, and then guess which one that they recognize and I recognize myself as. Anybody, quickly. The post. The post, people would think that it was actually the Peely. Yeah, and the reason, and I told my toots why, because you hold us together. Yeah, 
you have a way to kind of navigate me and my and me, um, my hit her uncles and, and my, my siblings together. And so I want you guys to know that then as we move into next year is really trying to understand what is your role, yeah, in terms of that that whole kauhali um, connectedness. Um, I'm going to skip and then I'm going to, this is what I kind of asked the counseling department to do because we just worked on that. But I'm going to ask the same frame to you folks. Where do you see yourself in this Kauhale as we move into summer with Alana and Lizanne and into the new school year come July and, and, and August? Yeah. Are you the Pohana Kahua Ulehala or the Piliako? And if you can remember anything from this presentation in a very short time, in just six minutes, is understanding that you know the, those four components. And again, there's multiple multiple components. And I see uh, Aulani here. I see some of our our cultural practitioners that may a little bit know more. My kai, yeah. I'm only sharing the experiences that I have. But if you were to identify yourself in one of these things, what is it? Yeah because we have to be able to uh, move fluidly between certain things given the space. Not all of us become content leaders in, in, in year after year after year, yeah? Sometimes you're the one that has to guide your content. You're the ones that have to guide your academy, yeah? And so and sometimes you're the ones that have to bring people together, or you're the ones that bring the level of conversation of care, yeah, into, the, into, into your group, yeah, in order for us to really kind of take a look at where our students are. And so, and again, I think about the Kauhale, and I'm saying this because you can imagine that next year, Kauhale concept is going to continue. That's going to be, for this, for this guy over here, as we as I move into the 35 years of, of K-12 administration um, teaching, Kauhale, I think I embrace that totally. And I'm mahalo Aulani and Haoli folks, because it took me time to figure that out, because I kind of knew it. And if you were at Hilo Intermediate back, I think some of you may have been in Hilo Intermediate when I was there at Vice Principal. Um, the Kauhale concept was kind of kind of big too at that time too. They call it um, tribes, yeah? But I call it the Kauhale. Um, but if you take a look at where our kupuna were, yeah, you can see the different kinds of hale as well. And then I think about where, what the, the Kauhale is here. Yeah, in terms of where we are. Yeah, and I'm not gonna. I'm not gonna lie. It, it, it gets tedious trying to balance everybody's hale within the kau hale of the highest school. It's not impossible. Yeah, it's just because I'm not only dealing with the kau hale itself or the hale itself. I'm dealing with the, the 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 internal pieces that move, because we all come from different genealogical, historical places and spaces. There's and again, um, it, it's it's the managing of. I don't want to say managing. But it's a stupid word. It's the guiding of everybody in order for us to understand that everybody has a function and intention on this campus. And then I think about also, well, what does it mean for our kids who come from the different communities? Because sometimes we congregate here not quite understanding that they also come from communities that are unique in their own kauhale. And so I, I shared this, this thing of, you because know, my place, even though I laid my head in, in Pana Eva for the past 40, 50 years, yeah, I, I'm still tied to Kyokaha. That's my place. And so I think about what, what's in my Kauhale, yeah? And I need to know that because I make reference that. Many of you make reference to where you come from, yeah? And I think that's one of those biggest pieces is that sometimes, and I think I learned that um, from Taupori and Kekuhi, is that sometimes we gotta come up first with our own narratives before we can even teach children and understand their narratives. Yeah. I shared this with uh, the new student orientation um, peeps on Saturday and this past Monday night. The new students coming in on Saturday and then the 112 or whatever coming up from middle school. And then I think about the, the pedagogical approach of where do we want to see our kids when they exit here? And we all know as educators, I'm not too sure how many, you know, I've been fortunate to have taught everything from preschool to college, you know, but I know that in the model teaching, the model teaching is so very prevalent in the kindergarten to grade five. And then you have to do a little bit more guiding teaching and learning in grade six to eight. Yeah, and I'm only packaging that just because that's the, it, it can actually flow a little bit more fluid amongst the different. But in my mind, this is what I'm seeing. 
And then when you get to high school, it has to be more targeted teaching and learning. Yeah, there has to be more post-secondary planning. And I said this, and I'm, I'm, I think I kind of just heard crickets when I said this, is that there has to be an intentional release. Yeah, we cannot be holding our kids' hands all the time. We have to be able to have an intentional release, knowing that they're ready to take the next step. Because even, and I think we've done a very, very good job. I think with the, with the exception of some of my current seniors, I'm really worried because, and I, I blame it on pandemic. I don't blame it on us. I blame it on pandemic because we're releasing them and I'm really worried that they're not ready for what the world has to offer them. But however, the intentional release will that allow them to be independent. If we're able to shoot for that, especially as a high school, then we'll be able to really, really see the fruition of, of some of our work. So then what does this mean in terms of next year? So you kind of heard about the Kauhale, yeah? So that's gonna continue next year at the high school. You can see what the intention is, so you know, how do we get to our kids and then allow them to be um, moving towards a more independent mode of, of, of life. Um, but we also know that we're still very responsible for AOLA. And if there's something that, that I'm, I'm hoping that summer school will, will Will, will continue to do is really dive deep into the AOLA. And, and, and everybody should have this and they're in their pretty poster thingy, wingy framed on the wall, whatever, you know. And the, but when I think about these things, you know, this is the expectations, not only for our students here, but expectations that every single graduate will have an understanding of what these things are. I have my hat on, call am I? Have their, that understanding of that when they're exiting our school, yeah? And so we need to figure out, well, how does that work? We, it's been around for quite a while now. It's been around since Dr. Stender's time. And so that's about five, six years. And we may not have quite dive into it as much. However, we know that it exists, yeah? And so now I think it's a time because the empowerment upon the, the onus is upon us in terms of how we're giving these things to our students. And so as messaging is coming down from, from, from up above, when I say up above, it's above this campus. Yeah, we know that some of these things that have been are now gonna be more prevalent in what we're trying to do as educators, yeah? And so I, I, I bring this out because I think it's important. And in addition, I'm gonna go back. Um, is in addition, the Weavey Edge Learning and Teaching. So working with Kaipo was my kai, working with Kaipo, on the Kauhali concept and then touching upon the Mo'olelo, the cows, my ka'i. Um, I'm asking Kekuhi to take it over from there on the Mo'olelo for next semester, the first semester, and Kekuhi will be working with us on the narrative because her halal ohi'a has, is really taking off. Um, and that's her business, I guess. That's her thing. Um, but I'm hoping that Kekuhi will be able to, to join us on maybe a couple of times next semester to continue that. The Na'awal stuff is, is us, yeah? And we're not only talking about the content, but the linkage of content to the, the, the cultural indigenous connectivity that exists as well. And so to next year, we're gonna continue with understanding and strengthening the Kahale, as I mentioned, but also taking a look at the narrative and, 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 and really take a look at how does it, whose narrative, and I think this is the, the thing that we're trying to do, yeah, is trying to really create the indigenous kind of pedagogical thinking, yeah? So seeking opportunities to optimize learning by providing our students with learning experiences that are engaging, relevant, challenging, purposeful, and meaningful, and that will ultimately lead to student success. Never ever did I think we would have a scuba diving class. Never ever, yeah? But that's part of that movement, yeah, in terms of really trying to provide a challenging opportunity for our students and just to kind of, kind of really pique their interest in terms of what they want to see. Creating classrooms and areas of learning where we're able to apply learning from the classroom within the immediate environment and community because Kona is not the same as Kau. Hyokai is not the same as Paneva, I know. Yeah, Hilo is not the same as Waimea. And so when we, when we bring them here, we try to, we, we, we teach them, but are we teaching them to, to, to take that and how does it apply within the communities that they were born and raised in? And that's the, it's, it's more, if it, at the very minimum, is, is a question, well, what does that mean in your community? What does it mean with the people that you guys see every weekend? What does that mean in terms of the, the issues and challenges that you're facing within your, your place? 
yeah? And embracing the teachings that are derived from our environment and our community and recognize and value the unique knowledge that our children are surrounded by daily. Because we have some smart cookies here on this campus. Yeah, adults and students alike. And then the cultural indigenous pedagogical practices, no intimately years their, their school community, because how many of us know that if I say out of the 60 kids you have in your class or 80 kids you have in your class, you know where every single student is from. Because it does matter. It does matter in terms of your connection. You know, one thing about being here and being able to see who comes off the bus and seeing bus lists and seeing all this stuff, I kind of kind of see where these kids come from. Yeah. I know who's taking a two hour bus ride. I know the challenges that they're facing because of the distance that they have. I have two that live on the corner side, Waka, Waikoloa side. Yeah. Um, direct experiences, I mentioned that again, understanding place-based education, you know, and that's something that we can touch upon Hala Kupu Kupu, um, as well as some of the things that I, I plan to open up next school year with. And Kathy Stratt, as I mentioned, she's my goddess of, of inquiry. And if you, and she's a professor at the University of Arizona. Um, she is, she is, she, she speaks, she, she, she does what she says, yeah. And I'm very fortunate about that. I'm gonna wrap it up a little bit. And like, so I guess the question then becomes whose narratives are we listening to and connecting to? Yeah. And so next year, Eola, next year, our OEV edge learning and teaching, yeah? Next year, really taking a look at pedagogical practices. Those are the three pieces. Yeah, those are not new. It's just we're continuing them. Um, but then it comes down to, when we talk about the, the Mo'olelo part of the OEV edge, it really talks up, speaks about well, whose narratives are we listening to and connecting to? And then it does talk about transformation, yeah? And who are we transforming? Are we transforming ourselves? I hope. Are we transforming our children? I hope, yeah? And so I'm gonna bring this, you know what? Dr. Anderson, you're here. Or oh, did I not, did I, was he only in my mind? No, he's here. No, no, I'm here. <laughs> <laughs> I could have sworn. Not, not on campus, but I'm here. Are you on campus? No, you're no, at home. On campus, yeah. Do I you have this thing on your computer? Because I'm gonna screw this up, I know. But I wanna end with this. When we talk about transformation and then Dr. Anderson shared this video because when we talk about the transformation and the connection of knowledge and allowing students to travel upon the pathway that they feel is pono for themselves up to and beyond graduation, I thought this video was probably one of the most profound videos because it does speak not only about the physicality of a person, but the mindset. Yeah, which is part of AOLA. So, um, Dr. Anson, are you able to queue it up on your side? Because I can. Let me, Tracy, 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 if you can play it. If not, I'll try yeah, it. I'm going to try it. Okay, I'm going to play this. Okay, you don't see it yet now. What do you see on your screen? I'm going to stop your sharing. slide deck. Okay, I'm going to stop sharing. I'm going to share again. Not, I have it up. Okay, let's see. What do you see? Uh, transformation video. Yeah? Okay. Now, if I play it. Looks like it's working. You hear words? You hear song? Yes. Be a little louder. And that ultimately affects it. Okay, hold on. Um, uh, it was a normal thing for me to be eating like two to three servings of food at Okay, wait. I'm gonna wait, wait. Okay, wait. How the hell I do this? <laughs> How do I make louder? Good meal and still be hungry. You know, I it's working. Have Gradually, every year, I was getting bigger and bigger and bigger and just eating more and more and more. And um, I was eating large amounts of food, then. not the healthiest kinds too, like the worst types of food ever, like chips, donuts, um, McDonald's, Burger King, you name it, and, and I probably ate it. This is what initially led to my weight gain over the years. However, I was a, still a very active person. You know, I was participating in multiple sports. 
Uh, I would play football, rugby, and I even began lifting weights at a young age. Uh, however, that still did not stop the number on the scale from increasing over the years. And it wasn't increasing in muscle, definitely not. It was increasing in fat. I didn't think much of my weight gain at a young age. You know, I always thought that I was on the larger side, but I never thought it would have escalated to where it was. You see, I guess you could say food for me was a source of relief and it allowed me to escape any emotions that I felt throughout the day. You know, I ate for taste, not for hunger. I ate all the different junk foods that I wanted to. And um, I was trying to get down as much food as possible, no matter how full I felt. My weight at my heaviest was 278 pounds with a body fat percentage of 38%. And already that in itself is a crazy um, idea to even think about. If you gave me another two to three months, I'm sure I would have broken into the 300 range. And um, throughout the years of my stress eating, overeating, or whatever you wanted to call it, I didn't want to admit that it was an issue for myself. And I created my own little world that I lived in pretty much. Um, and for me, food was always a comfort and it allowed me to escape reality. Eventually the weight had begun to affect my confidence and it would get to my head. Mentally, I was not prepared to overcome the health issues that I would be faced with in the future. You know, I was at an increased risk of heart disease, diabetes, high blood sugar, and much more. This is not the life that I had originally planned out for me, you know, bedridden by the age of 30. I didn't plan for me to be struggling with putting on my shoes and being completely out of breath by the end of it. I didn't plan for me to even like be faced with all these different, you know, health issues that I've heard about before and it was eventually gonna become a reality for me. However, I did plan to become a United States Navy SEAL, you know, being able to save others and have the ability to change the lives of others. But how could I even do that when I can't save myself? You know, I didn't have to be 278 pounds and completely out of shape. I knew I could lose this weight and do so much more. I have lost over 100 pounds and managed to keep that weight off. However, I never thought this would have been possible. You know, I've tried losing weight before and I tried these different diets, but it just never worked out for me. So what was the difference between then and now? The mindset. I used to believe that I could not transform my body. You know, I believed I would always be big and there was nothing I could do. I tried this diet, I tried these workouts, I tried it all, but I still could not lose the weight. I believed in this, that, and the other, but I was not believing in the right thing. I had to change my mindset and believe in myself. Believe that the number eventually on the scale would decrease. Believe that running and weightlifting were going to make a difference and believe that eating healthy will accomplish the goals I have. Through making the right choices and being consistent over a long period of time is how I was able to completely transform my body. There was no special pill or special life-changing diet. There were no secrets. Just believing in myself and being consistent was the answer. There were times throughout my journey where I wanted to throw in the towel and quit. You see, whether your goal is to lose weight or to gain muscle, if you put your mind to it, you will be able to accomplish anything. Hello, Mike. You don't have to make life harder for yourself. You shouldn't just quit and throw in the towel. If you're consistent over a long period of time, you will see results. You just have to be willing to take that first step and continue pushing through the times even when you don't feel like doing anything. Do not stop just because you're not seeing results. In fact, if you don't see anything at all, that should motivate you to train harder than last time and push you harder than before. You know, test your limits. The only thing that is stopping you from achieving your goals and ambition is you. Okay. Mahalo Nui. Um, I'll end there. Let me stop sharing everything. You know, and again, and hopefully this kind of opens up that whole manao about, um, you know, your pathway as you're going into um, Calvella 2021. Because I think every single body's, every single person that comes to your classroom 
they all have their uniqueness. Yeah, it's hopefully that we can guide them and navigate them to that point that we're able to allow them to make those decisions for themselves. And and and, and I'm going to tell you with with La, I've known Laakia when he was at, at um, Kyokaha School before he came here, and it is a transformation. And it is about the care and duty that we provide students upon the content that we give our students. You know, when we're walking and then I see La with Ryan on top of his bike following him, that's the extra care, yeah, to allow him to really take a look at where he is in this space and time. And so with that, to Alana, to the rest of the Kumo, as in may you, may you transform some of our kids and, and allow them to really take a look at where their passion is and where their desire may lie in, in their own futures. And I'll leave, leave that with you folks. So mahalo nui ya Aloha. Mahalo kumulehua. Thank you, Ryan. Thank you, Alana. Yeah, so those of you guys who know Laakea, my goodness, he is such a teddy bear, such a nice kid. Um, I haven't seen him yet on campus, but when I do, my goodness, I'm going to have to give him some knuckle bumps or something. Anyhow, uh, I just wanted to kind of frame out our day today before um, Aulani sets or introduces or gives us an overview of the OEV Edge learning and teaching expectations. So just real fast, um, we're, we're pretty much on schedule, which is kind of cool. Um, we have um, Alani coming up and then we'll have a break at nine o'clock and then we'll move on with some announcements, just the discussing deliverables um, of these two work days that we have for this week and next week. Um, and then we'll have our share out for our why, how, and what. And then the rest of the day is our work period. And then if you guys need, I, I will be here to um, answer any more questions or if you need any, any other support. So with that, um, we'll just turn it over to Aulani. So mahalo Aulani for coming. Um, I work closely with her with Alau Kavai and then with our task force from last year going to Aotearoa. So um, I've actually known Aulani for many years um, with um, my, my wife being her co-worker at Navahi. So we go back quite a ways um, and so fortunate to have her in my life on, on multiple levels. So mahalo Aulani for coming. Yeah, mahalo, aloha kakahi akakako. Um, I really appreciate being with you guys today. And after talking with Alana over the last week and a half or so about what you guys are planning to do this summer, or um, it was it was cool to know that um, we have all KS teachers teaching this summer in high school. That's like really great. I think that I can't remember the last time that's happened. So I just wanted to acknowledge your, um, your commitment to do that and to also build on some of the things that Kumulehua has said, because um, I really appreciate his, um, I've sat in a couple of um, sessions where he's talked about Kauhale and his articulation of Kauhale and how he's implementing it in high school. And every time I listen to it, I hear something different that I think aligns well with the K through 12 kind of, you know, cross divisional verbiage. And a lot of what, I mean, a lot of what we do happens in the divisions and then it happens across the campus. And at some point, be, like for myself being in the situation I am and where you guys are seated, it, it, we have to make an effort to kind of communicate these things out. Otherwise we don't even know what's going on in certain areas of the campus. So. Uh, the articulation that Kumulehua is providing is really, um, I think, acknowledges the fact that we all have to work together to kind of build up the, the collective kauhale that goes from kindergarten to 12th grade. And what I'm going to share with you actually fits right in there. So um, I just, I appreciate him setting the stage for the next few slides that I have. Alana, can I ask you to share your slide deck? And then I'll yeah, no um, problem. Mahalo. Okay, so just really quickly, first of all, um, what I've been what Alana asked me to do is really talk about this document. 
which I think all, all of you have had, have been given uh, probably the beginning of last year. And then I think Alana also has that center uh, two page chart printed out for you to be working with. This is the document, the OEV Edge Learning and Teaching Expectations is what I think you'll be covering after I'm done. She'll be walking you through that. Now, latch, I'm gonna latch on to a couple points that Kumulehua made about where he wants to move the rollout or the normalization of this document into high school next year. And that is into this Mo'olelo section. He said that um, like whose narrative, whose narrative are you hearing? Whose narrative are you teaching? And whose narrative are the kids hearing and learning from? And what I'm here today is to ask you to use that same critical kind of thinking on this document. Yeah, whose document is this? How did it come to be? Who wrote it? And who's telling us we gotta use it? It absolutely must be looked at critically. And so Alana asked me to kind of create some transparency on that for you guys. So you know where you're getting, wh like wh where is this coming from? How did it get put together? Why is it saying what it's saying? So that's what I'm gonna be covering in the next few slides. Um, I really welcome any questions that you might have about the process. I know that some of the things I'm gonna be talking about today are probably, uh, you've heard before, um, and um, maybe not. Maybe there were missing things and things are not coming through as clearly as we'd like. So please ask any questions. I'm happy to answer them to the best of my knowledge. Kumulehua was involved in the process heavily as you um, um, likely know. We also have two task force members with us today, which is Alana and Eric. And so they, you know, some of the things I'm talking about today, they were in the front row seat. And of course, Kehau. Kehau was part of our core team supporting the whole thing. So um, the first slide that Alana has up here is really Alau Kavai. And you guys have seen iterations of this slide, different versions. Now, basically just breaking it down, Alau Kavai is a dual engine system for our campus. It doesn't, nobody, no other campuses don't have it. It's something unique to KS Hawaii. Um, it basically is our our innovation and engine. It's the way our campus handles innovation. It's the way our campus handles change. And so basically whenever there's an idea or a, uh, a need for change or a need to affirm our direction or to create data around substantiating any approach that we have to learning and teaching or student experience or campus operations, whatever it might be, it, it will be brought into the Alaukavai engine. Now that center, there's that center figure eight, it has two halau in there, halau iaia, which is learning and teaching, and halau kupu kupu, which is research and development. Now, like Lisan was saying earlier, we used to be halau kupu kupu, where I'm assigned, used to be in the, in the summer space. We would use it as a laboratory, primarily from kindergarten to eighth grade. Yeah. And we would be doing action research projects and pulling data on different things. And that's where we started. Um, last year, the beginning of last year, we moved out of just summer and went, we are now doing work in the K through 12 space. Now, what does that mean? That means that anytime a teacher, a student, or anyone has an idea that they want to test out, there's a process in place to be able to support that kind of curiosity and research. Sometimes those opportunities are opened up by Halau Kupu Kupu, and sometimes those opportunities come to us and we create space for it. Now, in theory, if something goes into research and development, you'll have a time period in which you'll be doing the research and with the findings that you get, with the time period that's allotted for any given project, it will eventually go to Aha Naile or Aha Ao, our leadership, our campus leadership body. And they will be given access to the project and the findings and decide whether or not it needs to go into learning and teaching for a scaling conversation, like to be scaled K through 12 or to find a space for it on campus, or the recommendation could be to go back into Halau Kupu Kupu and continue the research because it's not good enough. It doesn't fit our campus. There's, it depends what the findings are. Now, this was no different. This document was no different. When there was a need to create a stronger pathway to Aola. Now, that comes from the fact that 
we wanted to improve what we were doing with AWOL on campus. At some point, leadership took a step back and said, we need to do better at AOL. But how are we gonna do it at KSH? Like, how are we gonna strengthen the student evidence and experience in AOL? OEV Edge was born from that. And then these, the need for learning and teaching expectations unique to KSH, unique to our Kauhale, yeah? not enterprise-wide, not track campus wide but unique to KSH. There was a need for, for another set of standards that would help us get to AOLA stronger. So there was a task force open for this document. Okay? It went into the engine in Halau Kupu Kupu, came out of it, and then went into Halau Iei at the beginning of last year when you guys got it. Okay, so moving to the next slide. Oh, no. Um, this is the task force that was response that signed up. So basically we put the app, we put the opportunity out. We had applications come in. Uh, we went through those applications with the help of the principals and made selections cross divisionally. And this was, these are the members of the task force that did the ground research in order to produce this document. It's all voluntary. And it's all, the, everyone was compensated separately from their regular responsibilities. So this was work that was over and above what, um, what your current, their current assignments were. So if these are the people that did the work, so who are you getting your information for? Through, these are the, these are the researchers that were researching in the resources and synthesizing all of that to come up with this document. Okay, they were highly supported by the core team. And, um, but it, I think the, the main point is that this is a teacher driven document. Yeah, this is not enterprise document. This is not, this is not a, a um, principal document. This is a teacher driven document. Everything in it came out of teacher research um, from these people that are here representing their divisions. Okay, so we can go on further. Next document, I mean slide. Okay, so what we're looking at here is over 10 months, the core team supported the task force that was made up of those members in, um, in designing um, their research and following our um, Alau Kavai um, innovation methodology. We do have a research methodology that we use, a specific way that we do research to make sure that it lines up to AOLA and the outcomes that we have and expect on campus. And so um, they worked 10 months to do that, culminating in school visit, visits in Aotearoa, which you can see some of the pictures here. Um, and when we went to Aotearoa, we were in a position that was in October. Yeah, Aulana. Uh, yeah, we went, we went to Aotearoa in October to, to observe some of the classrooms that were using some of the things that you have in, in this document. It was to affirm and to really kind of put um, real life practice um, in front of our task force in a, to be able to make more refined decisions about what would make, what the document would become. It was on the road there between um, class visits, school visits. Um, we had a panel of Pacific scholars that came to talk to us. We were able to talk to principals and look at um, and, and high level educators to, and get their feedback on how they set up their schools. And, and then we, we would come back from the day and then go into like meeting space at the hotel and work another five or six hours through discussions and protocols to kind of pull out what was rising to the top. When we got back from Aotearoa, we had synthesized all the research that they had done in the 10 months and folded in all of the actual experiences of doing the school visits. And then we were kind of left with a, the need to organize all the things that the teachers were um, floating to the top, all the stuff that was elevating out of the document. Um, that was a huge task. And the core team had the responsibility to go through all of the film, the recordings, um, to start grouping uh, what the findings were. And we actually, the Halal Kupu Kupu core team is the one that organized it in the document that we're using today. So the structure of this document 
is the core team organizing the findings of the task force. I think that's important to understand. Yeah. Okay, so you can go to the next slide. Hold on now. Now, this slide here is representative of all of, it's representative of the methodology that the task force used and where they got their information. So like Kumu Lehua was saying, where was the information coming from? Well, they mapped their resources all the way across time and through different spaces of Aikai. There were lots in Kahiki, there were lots coming from Hawaii and other indigenous spaces, definitely North American um, resources as well, other educational areas in um, global partnership and then future forecast research. All of this stuff synthesized combined with the school visit is what, where the document came from, okay? And very, very, in, sometimes very intense conversations, sometimes very critical conversations, uh, definitely heated at times, but uh, productive. So it was a struggle. There was productive struggle in, in those 10 months and um, the result was this document. Now, um, we can go on to the next one. I don't know. Okay, so I want to talk a little bit about these three, you know, the headers at each of those columns. Yeah. So we had to, when we got back, we had a ton of notes and the teachers had done a really good job kind of creating bullets of areas that they felt had to be in the We Edge Learning and Teaching document. Now remember, they're connecting back to AOLA the whole time. They're reflecting not only on their research, but their own training and experiences. So them as frontline educators in our classrooms with our children, you know, our students, they were constantly synthesizing real, their real experience and responsibilities to kind of make sure that those bullets that that needed to surface to the top were focused on improving the student experience. Um, we had to kind of group them. It was just a whole bunch of bullets. And so when we started to kind of, as a core team, look at where the thematic angles were, we realized that they were grouping into these three categories. They were grouping into kauhale or these social emotional relationship pieces where the teachers felt like we needed to do a better job, not just, it, it's not that we, the findings were that the campus wasn't doing good job with Pilina with students, but they felt that the, there needed to be a higher value for it for um, in terms of success, it, how we define success. So those are floating, floating to the top. So those ended up getting grouped as kauhale because kohale was a value and a term we were already using across campus. Um, the second one was there were a bunch of mo'olelo pieces, a bunch of post-its and a bunch of bullets that were saying that we needed to teach and learn and talk about history and truth. And we had to really look at the Hawaiian experience today as well as the Hawaiian experience over time and how that positions our children today when they enter into the world and when we talk about college career and life readiness, are we being honest with ourselves about the experience our kids are having? And when we look at the future, um, what are we equipping them with all the things that they're gonna need to be successful when they're like entering the, um, their job, their fields? Do they have all of the things that they need? I remember being on the task force, looking at the future forecast research and you know, the, the year 2040 is the magic number with future forecast research. You know, um, they always say 2040, it, it's, gonna be, it, it's gonna be like this and it's gonna be like that. And then we did some math and we realized that, oh my gosh, the kindergartners that are currently enrolled in our campus will be 26 in 2040. In other words, they're gonna be entering their, their fields and we're already not shifting some of the things that were recommended in those documents. Now, the research wasn't like, the teachers didn't approach the research nor were they encouraged to approach the research like let's plug and play this guy's stuff. He's saying all the truth. They were required to synthesize the research and make sure that it matched 
our kauhale. So I think we were informed by a whole bunch of stuff, but the driver was really teacher voice and teacher decision. You know? So that's how Na'awao and Mo'olelo came out is we were starting to see these thematic themes. So eventually we collapsed some of those bullets, um, wrote them into the chart that you guys are working with and housed them under each of those buckets. Yeah. Now you can hit the next um, slide. Alana, mahalo. So now what happened is once the task force members presented to Ahanaile, which is part of the Laokavai process, they were going in for uh, approval of what their recommendations were or direction. Like either Ahanaile was gonna say, hey, get back to the drawing board. Your research is weak on this area. You didn't use enough information. This looks sloppy or this doesn't fit. There was all kinds of possibilities or they were gonna affirm the direction and make recommendations. And so we did a document in, in, this, in this booklet that you guys have, there's some writing in there. That's some of the document, um, the research document and the chart. And then after they did the, um, after we presented out to them, they affirmed the direction and then campus leadership went into a series of conversations around the implications of this document. Now in that room were all the principals, there were some VPs in that room, different leadership, you know, people in leadership that were um, essential to campus. Of course, Pu'okula was there, um, Scott was there, Hope Pu'okula, and they continued to work through this. And your experience with the document is a result of those conversations. Um, that's the journey of where we, what, that's the once upon a time and how the document was born. Now, there's one thing that I want to emphasize. It's that it is a living document. In other words, it says a bunch of stuff and um, it's not, it's just, it is what it is in 2021, April, but we're looking forward to improving it constantly. The only way that can happen is if we can really actively measure your use of it which is what's happening right now with Alaokavai 9. We have an action research project going with 17 teachers across the divisions. They're working on 14 projects that will come to a close at the end of this year. The data of those exploratory projects will be coming out this summer. That's the first teacher-driven inquiry with data that we're collecting around the expectations. And Alana is a, um, Alana and Karine are a team on that um, project as well. So um, that's sort of where it's living right now, at least in the Alau Kavai space and in the Halau, the Halau Kupu Kupu and Halau Ieie space. And then um, everybody in each division are also like Kumu Naiku are taking it and, and shaping their own use and movement of this forward. Um, yeah, next, it's exciting to hear what Kumu Lehua has planned for you guys next year. And I'm, Alana and I have been talking a lot about what she wants you guys to do with it this summer. And I think that that's just really, really good work prepping for next year, um, just based on strictly from my perspective. But um, yeah, that's pretty much it, Alana. And if you guys have any questions, I'm happy to answer them. I'm gonna put a link in the um, chat. We do have a website for Alau Kauai. And if you ever wanna kind of like, if you're curious or if you wanna see what we're up to or what's happening in Halau Ie or Halau Kupu Kupu, um, you can take a look at this website. We do try to update it regularly, but it does have all of our research projects on there, the current efforts, where work is happening. And we're hoping that that will grow over time. Yeah. Um, and that there'll be more opportunities. There will be more opportunities next year to be involved in the research himself, itself. So um, those will be coming out. But that's about it, Alana. Did I cover everything you needed or? Um, I, I think um, that is exactly what we needed. Um, you know, the call out of intentional focus with the Kauhale, Mo'olelo and the OL um, and, and the pathways that are going to lead us to Eola, I think are, ex they're not simplified, but the, it's, a, it's a discerning path towards success. And so I think you covered it exactly like how 
I had it vision first of all, and then, and then also speaking to the point of us moving forward to try and prepare our students for the future that might not exist yet is really exciting, a really exciting opportunity for us to transform our thinking in the way we are going to approach education in the very near future. And then also calling out the, um, that, that the OEV edge learning and teaching expectations is not a standardization of indigeneity or, or the static notion of culture, but more of a fluid and adaptable way to meet all the kids where they are at their, their current journeys. And, and with that, I'm referencing the book that um, Emilani Case um, just came out with. Um, she called out that if we stick to static notions of culture, then we are just repeating the same sort of settler colonialism. Um, and we don't ever want to do that again. So anyway, mahalo for that. I really appreciate um, Thank you, no. yeah. your time. And um, with that, I also um, want to want to put a shout out to uh, um, Jan Gapera, who's here today, because, um, you know, as we went through this pandemic, and we we're basically kind of just working on our own. Um, honestly, I'm just going to be kind of vulnerable at this point, as I felt really um, lost at one point, I felt completely lost, I didn't know if I was even helping my students. And with a lot of reflection, I just reached out to Jan, who's always willing to help me. And so, um, you know, talk about the strength of the Kauhale and, and being able to use the, um, the, the real pilina between, you know, coworkers to become, you know, hoakumu and then really leaning on each other to, to survive this crazy times. Um, and when I look at the screen, I, I see not just coworkers, but really truly friends. And so with, um, with Jan's help, I was able, she was, she was able to walk me through the 17 OEV edge learning and teaching expectations to prove to me that I wasn't lost, that I knew exactly what I was doing. And so for me, that um, gave me, it empowered me to, continue on my journey. And for you guys, um, as, as a Kalvela Kumu of, of 2021, um, I'm hoping that that happens for you guys at some level. Even if it's an introductory level, I hope that, um, that you can use this document as not just, oh, one more thing, but as a tool that can get you to to provide um, pathways for students to be successful in the real world. So Jan, did you wanna say anything about um, kind of the, the, pro the process or, or any, anything about what we've been doing behind the scenes kind of? Yeah, I just wanted to kind of echo on what Alana said. Like she was kind of at a place where she, she wanted to just get some reassurance. And I think no matter what the situation, Teachers just need that every once in a while. So being able to come to somebody to talk to, bounce ideas off of, that's the kind of support that we would like to provide. So I know that this work might feel new. Just want to reassure you that you guys are building on existing work and we're definitely here for support. So mahalo. Yeah, um, speaking of that, I mean, I just went to go visit Nathan yesterday and Michelle and Nathan were just already bouncing ideas off of each other and I just, it was just a great way to start my my fried my fry yay. You know, it's just, it was just really cool to feel their energy. Um, with that, I think we're good with taking a break till nine o'clock. Um, I want to mahalo Aulani for for really explaining that because um, big picture wise, it's it's a it's a pretty difficult thing to explain, but you do it so easily. I I'm just amazed. Um, and then Lisanne for you know your support. So other than that, we're going to start our work day after our break. So um, we'll do that. Um, Clint, did you want to say anything as well? I'm not. I don't, I'm not sure if you're going to stay around for a work day. So um, no, I think I'm just here for <laughs> contextualizing everything, see how that fits in, either or not with the kind of law stuff. But um, 
I think just echoing everybody else, mahalo for you guys' work this summer um, as we transition back to some type of in-person <laughs> normalcy with full class sizes, um, continue to do good work. Uh, I'll be here all summer as well for support, as well as Dari, Phil, Kumulihua. So um, mahalo to you folks for spending your Saturday with us. All right. And then, Lisan, did you want to say anything before we head into our break? Sorry. Um, just wanted to again mahalo and um, and reemphasize the support that everyone has already shared. Um, but we're all in this together, and as a kohale, it's a nice nice way to term it, um, as it is very much us as we move it forward and grow with it. So yeah, mahalo. All righty, I will see you guys back here at nine o'clock, so we can all brush our hair apparently, except for Clint. So. <laughs> All good. All righty. Thanks. <laughs> Mahalo. 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 I'm going to move forward here. Um, is it okay if I don't share my screen so that you guys can see what I'm looking at? Be because I can't see you guys. Well, I don't know what's going on with my computer, but anyway, um, I just wanted to go through the discovering your why. Um, if you look, I'm on slide 12 of the Calvella 2021 slideshow. Can you guys see that? So this is basically just, just kind of like a, a standard discovering your why. So if you look, we start with the why. If you guys haven't watched, but I'm sure many of us have watched the Simon Sicknick um, inspiring leaders um, TED talk about the why, how, and the what. Um, this is basically where it's coming from. And basically what we have here is an example of why we all work at KS and, and why we participate in PLC. So if you look, we start with the why at the very top where it says by lifting our lahui, we can increase the um, equality of opportunity for our haumana, enabling them to become global and local change agents. So this is basic a, a, a why, a driving force, a reason. And as you work your way down, this is the how, how, how do we get to what we're doing? Okay, so just giving you guys a heads up, I know you guys can read. So I wanted to share with you guys the next slide, which would be slide 13. And, and just, just as an example for, for you guys is, is my why, how, and what. And so I think we're, we're pretty clear that um, I'm here for you guys. So that's my why. Right by supporting Kumu to um, to grow the pa your passions in teaching, and then the Haumana will be greatly impacted through the Kauvela 2021 experience. And then the how deals with the OEV Edge expectations and how you're going to use those pathways to get the kids to the AOLA learner outcomes. And then the what for me is being a part of Calvella 2021. Um, Kumu and Haumana will continue to grow and prepare for the future. So just, just, some, just an example of my why, how, and what for this summer. Um, you guys may or may not have um, all of it done but um, what I'm gonna just do is just go around whatever you have. If you just have your why for why you are partaking in um, Calvella 2021, that would be great. I mean, as, as far as being able to see most of you guys teach last year, I, I think I know your why, but let's just, let's just share it out real quickly. We'll start out with Mr. Manly Kanoa. I knew, I knew once I like gave that smirk that you would call on me first. Um, and, you know, I was looking to try and complete my Google slides uh, and I couldn't find a good image of uh, just dollar signs. Right. Um, nah, nah, that was a, that was a throwback to a conversation that I had yesterday with some friends, but um, no, for real, for me, um, 
my why is, you know, you hear about kids that their biggest regrets or um, the biggest hopes that they thought that their um, high school experience would have taught them was those first things that they need as adults. Uh, and, and some of those things are basic financial um, necessities, like how to open a bank account and, um, you know, what, what a bank account really is and how banks work and why they're, why they're not really so scary as they look. Um, so to, to be able to do that and um, bring these very, very adult concepts to the classroom uh, and, and have them experience it by um, opening up fake accounts uh, in some cases uh, and um, also to get them to experience the stock market a little bit, it's, it's fun. And it, it, it opens their eyes and it, it makes it a little less scary to transition towards becoming an adult. Um, and, and hopefully it checks off that box. Like we're, I was just talking about box checking too with somebody else. Um, but it does check off that box of, um, things that I need to know, uh, in order to like really be ready for the world. So, uh, to be a part of that is a, is a fun experience. Right. It's definitely empowering for the kids as well. They have interesting conversations with their parents on top of that. So it's pretty mind blowing. Um, Mr. Cannon, could you please share out your why? Um, real quick is um, just to continue to introduce the kids to the opportunities in the engineering and technology space, because that is going to be ubiquitous and we need to integrate that. But also, as Manly said, it, it's all about business too. So when you get into the high tech, there is some serious business going on. But also because I've been able to um, I don't know how to say throw net in Hawaiian, but <laughs> some of the kids that come through the programs in the summer ultimately end up in the, in, the, in the pathway, which is cool. Not too many, but we're growing it. And maybe with the new um, framework, we can recruit more. Mahalo. Mahalo. Uh, Ryan, go ahead. Hello, everyone. <clears throat> um, so I have doing strength and conditioning. And the why is basically uh, just trying, well, I believe in the concept, um, health comes before wealth, it even comes that way in the, uh, <clears throat> in the dictionary. But anyway, um, yeah, you can't enjoy a wealthy lifestyle if you're not healthy. So anyway, my goal is to um, uh, express to the kids uh, what health and fitness means to them, because everybody's, everybody's in shape, right? Uh, what shape you want to be in. Um, uh, yeah, we got to get rid of that whole shape thing. But anyway, we're all in shape. <clears throat> That's the truth. But uh, what shape do you want to be in? Um, and La Kia was a great ex example of somebody discovering their their fitness journey, what fitness means to them. So that's the goal is everybody has a story. So that's the why, uh, what fitness and health means to them. Uh, how I do that <clears throat> is I want to introduce to them uh, various uh, concepts about their body, the physiology of the body, uh, how nutrition affects you and whatnot, and then give them opportunities to discover different workout techniques that you're not just limited to weight room running. I love running, but well, I don't all the time actually, but anyway, um, that all those things. And then, so how I'm going to do it, I guess with this coming back to school, uh, I, I got to re-image, um, uh, how I in, introduce things to them in the past, I used to take them to four miles and we used to do biathlons. I don't know if that's a, on a chaos site. <laughs> I know it's near it's near a chaos site um but anyway um yeah I, I like if if possible I'll work with you Alana and that but I like to take them back to four miles in some capacity where we could swim and and run again uh, during the summertime but there you go awesome all right Miss Donna Mahuna we're so lucky to have Donna and Jan with us this summer so welcome to um summer school Thanks, Alana. Yeah, we're venturing into something new and exciting. So Jan and I are co-teaching a pre-college 101, and it's actually kind of taking the place of we usually take like about 10 to 12 students on an actual Pacific Northwest college tour trip. So we're hoping that this class will kind of take the place of the actual trip, although we know that experience in itself cannot be duplicated in the classroom. But our why is by helping Nahomana prepare their Pulse High plans, we then help to prepare them for their future success and the future of our community, both locally, nationally, and globally. And we connected it to our ASCA counseling standards. 
um, mindset in that every student should graduate from high school prepared for post-secondary opportunities. Wonderful. Jan, were you gonna, did you wanna piggyback off of that or did she cover you? I'll do the how. Um, in terms of how, uh, we're looking at exposing our Nahamona to the information and hands-on experience experiences to develop their post high plans based on their strengths, talents, and interests. So we're again, um, going back to the ASCA mindsets and behaviors, ASCA meaning American School Counselor Association. Um, so we do have um, linking it and aligning it to our um, American School Counselor Association mindsets and behaviors. And Donna will do the what? Yes, boss. <laughs> All Nahamana will leave the class with a completed project of their choice from the options below that details their post high plans and career goals and begin the development of their portfolio. So we're going to have them either create a video book creator or a PowerPoint presentation of their post high plans. Nice, nice. Well done. All right, Michelle. Aloha. Sorry, I was trying to find my unmute, but I was looking at something. All right. So um, my what? Um, I or sorry, not my why. I'm being grounded in a sense of where one is from gives one the confidence to reach out beyond our current space into the greater world. So I believe that first and foremost, by giving our students a, a better understanding of their vahipana, um, the, especially if it's really significant to their ohana, will give them the confidence that, okay, I know where I'm from, now I can go out and, and, and go out to the rest of the world because I know how to get home if I need to. Um, another, uh, I love science, I love um, my onihanao, and I think this course is the best way to combine both of my passions. Um, and I want my students to explore their onihanao and their, and their family histories and their family stories and the significant places in their family histories. And I feel that if they develop that greater passion for both um, for those things and for uh, the study of like a conventional science that, um, yeah, the, you know, they don't have to go into science in the future, but having that, that grounding and that ability to see both sides of the Ike, um, would actually benefit them in no matter what they're in, in whatever they're going to do. Um, how I plan to do this, very different from last year, hopefully. Last year was very book learning, very talk story. Um, hopefully this year we're going to be able to get out there, um, meet some of the kupuna that I referenced in my course. Of course, I am concentrating on my own hanau, and at the end of the experience, I hope my students will, for their ho'ike, share their onihanao back with me and their, their mo'olalo and um, what they got out of the course. So um, more field experience, more hands-on work since hopefully we're gonna be in person. And of course, actually seeing these, these kupuna live um, in person, being able to interact with them in real time. Um, and uh, what, as I just said, um, what the students, what the homana will get out of this experience is it, they will investigate their own onihanao, their own mo'olalo, and they will um, tie that into the scientific concepts of geology. I mean, not all of them. I, I, I'm not a geologist, but I have a very strong passion for anything science related. Um, but yeah, that's what I hope to get out of that. And um, if I can get a fraction of the projects that I got out, if I can get the same level, if not, I mean, the same level of projects I can get this year, as I did last year, I will be thoroughly satisfied. Mahalo. Mahalo. The kids last year did a pretty amazing job considering we were dead into the pandemic. So mahalo for that. Um, Eric, go ahead. Sorry, I'm working so many windows. I'm just, it's, yeah. I had to find the mute button. I'm unmuted, right? Yeah. I don't know if you, just off topic here, I don't, I don't know if the rest of you have had these dreams where you go into moments of big pitch 
in Enterprise, and, and all of a sudden this voice comes in cr across and says, Eric, you're muted. Eric, unmute yourself. Oh, yeah, it's, it's becoming a complex with me. Anyway, the why. Uh, my why is I believe the expression of the OEV edge can create a better life for individual Ohana and community by empowering the individual to take risks, fail, and risk again. My how is instructing the student on how to express their own story in the most impactful way imaginable. And my what is I instruct students to discover every possible means of self ex expression. That's it. Mahalo for sharing. And I hope you find the mute button easier. <laughs> All right, Emily, Miss Scuba. Okay, this is my first time doing one of these. So I'm hoping that I at least got it in the right area. Um, so for my why, besides loving to teach diving, um, by giving Haumana formal training in diving, we can give them the skills to keep themselves and others safe while in and around the ocean, while also giving them the experience to be disciplined, self-sufficient, and develop teamwork skills. While diving in a controlled setting, it gives them an opportunity to see the beauty of their environment and appreciate the fragile ecosystem they live in. Very powerful. I really look forward to your course. Um, let's go ahead and continue with Patricia. So my why um, for my course is by teaching students how their brain works, I can help them understand the difficult emotions and behaviors that shape their teenage life, as well as the life of others around them. So I would like to help them answer questions like, why do I have anxiety? What happens if I injure my brain? How much sleep do I need? What do drugs do to the brain? And then aspects of their personality and what regions of the brain help form that. So that's my why. Very cool. Um, Patricia's class is very interesting because of the socio socio-emotional um, learning that we've been focusing on for the last several years. And um, even some of these kids that came out of our class last year are now looking to becoming um, OEV psychologists, which I think is, there's a huge need. If you've ever been around the homestead, I think you guys know that there is a huge need for um, mental health practitioners who are actual Hawaiian people. I mean, like they need to see themselves as in these areas. So very cool. Very cool. Thank you. And then last but certainly not least, Mr. Troy Souza. I was hoping you would forget about me. Um, never, never. All right. My, my how, my why, and my what is all the same thing for my class and its voice. Um, we get to see what the kids can do. We get to get a peek into what they can do, but we don't hear who they are. And in my class, I like to bring out who they are. And that's it. Wonderful. Wonderful. Um, okay. Um, you know, be, as, as you guys know, our English department is full of um, Wahine energy. And so for Troy to represent um, the Kane side is really cool to, to have the kids see um, or experience creative writing from a different perspective. So um, a, again, a very powerful experience for the kids. All right, before we move on, um, what I was wanting to do was kind of just share with you guys um, just one clip of, of the project that I've been working with Corinne on. And um, this is one of those examples as far as like how the OEV edge learning and teaching expectations will drive um, our students to, to really show what they're, they're capable of. And so I'll just quickly 
share my screen with you guys and then um, kind of just go through what's going on with this. So if you guys look at slide 17, basically this is the, the journey I am taking you on and that is to familiarize yourselves with the OEV Edge expectations in regarding your, your summer curriculum. And then some of the target behaviors will be to begin to understand and connect your, your curriculum with the OEV Edge expectations and how they fit into the ALN learner outcomes. Then step three, um, determine the activities. So really, I mean, as, you, as we sh just shared out, we are already doing or fulfilling some of these expectations for OEV edge expect the OEV edge expectations. So the next thing would be um, how can we how can we apply other expectations? So that would be part of your growth. And then at the end of our depends 10, 20 days of Calvella 2021, um, you know, just a reflection of did you accomplish your goals um, in expanding your knowledge of the OEV edge expectations and how they fit into AOLA. Um, moving on, um, I think we covered that. This is the pacing guide that, um, that I've given you guys. If you guys don't have a, a concrete pacing guide that you're already working off, I've given you a, a form right here that can help you if you need. Um, so there's that, if, just if you need it. So it's organized into weeks and then um, where you would fit your OEV edge expectations. Next, oops, okay. And so this is basically, I just wanted to share with you guys um, from my end, just what, what we've been doing as far as um, Karine and I have been doing in applying the OEV edge um, expectations to our regular school year. So what we did was we focused on the na'oal part of um, the expectations, and that is learners identify as learned people who understand that knowledge is crucial to countering generational socioeconomic and political inequity. And so under those, um, under this is, is two little bullet points, and that would, would focus on um, how the students can strengthen their voice and choice. And then after that, how do they awamo kuleana with, um, with the knowledge they have gained through choosing their own pathways of conviction. And then the second bullet really talks about um, engaging the students in authentic issues of importance related to the Lahui. And so for, for us, this was really important being English teachers. Um, and we use, we use basically um, a, a poetry slam unit to attach part of the OEV edge expectations. And so if you look down below, um, we've connected also the AOLA learner outcomes with the, with the Malama and Kuleana um, part of the AOLA learner outcomes. So just a quick explanation just a quick rundown of that. Um, where did I put it? If you guys need the OEV Edge learn, learning and teaching expectations, they are attached, they are linked to slide 17 at the bottom with the notes. Um, there's that. And then really, I just wanted to play for you guys just a quick um, video. If you know Anam Tata, she doesn't speak really talk in class. I don't know if any of you guys know who this is, but this is where she's at with her slam poem. And I just wanted to share with you this, this quick three minute video. Thinking back in time, I really miss the days of being five. I miss that feeling of genuine happiness that I never quite learned to appreciate. And that feeling of waking up each morning excited for a new day, heading to school on the first day of kindergarten with a smile on my face, a memory I could never erase. I miss when I enjoyed 
going outside because I now spend my days locked away, scrolling through the same apps all day. My mind trapped like a horse going round and round on a carousel. I miss that feeling of not having any care in this huge world with no weight on my shoulders. The times have changed and I grew older. Right now, it is the year 2021 and everyone is blinded by a screen and we all care so much. Too much. It's never about satisfying ourselves anymore, it's about satisfying others. Change your face, change your hair, change your attitude, don't hang out with them, they aren't normal. Don't wear that, you're too quiet. Don't feel this way. Blend. Blend. Blend in. Fit in, and then maybe society will accept you. Now we wake up each day to social media, giving us our news that there's more hatred in this generation than we thought, from school shootings to racism to abuse to financial problems to loneliness and harassment. Violence says it's never the answer, but it's all the world has ever known. And soon we become too tired to even get out of bed. You see, living as a teen in 2021 feels like you are lost at sea, thrashing around trying to keep from drowning all the time. But we are weighed down trying to stay afloat. Oxygen acts as our hope, but sometimes it's just so hard to breathe. And it takes too much effort to find an outlet. And soon you forget what the light even looks like. We can't reach out for help because we don't shout loud enough and it's not like anyone would hear our cries. We're scared to move upward but we can't keep falling further down over a hit rock bottom. And I know not all of us are drowning but the 91% that are, are fighting for their happiness. It is the year 2021, and although it seems like this year has just begun, I wonder how long it may take until all of us are able to reach the shore with the 9 percent. All right, and there you have it. That is, <laughs> that is Autumn Tara, I call her. Um, if you know her, you know that you can't really get a whole sentence out of her. And if you do, it, it's an amazing um, feat. She uh, had to go through choosing her own, um, her own pathway of learning. And then it took a lot of Pilina building, a lot of time to get to that fourth try of performing her, her poem. Um, and so with that, I'm going to basically cut you guys loose to work on, look over your um, your pacing guides, see how the OEV Edge expectations um, are already embedded into your pacing guide, and then how it leads to the pathway of AOLA. Um, I will stay on as, as um, if you guys need support. Um, and then if you guys need, um, need some assistance as well throughout the week and such, um, Jan Gaparo said she is willing to work with any of you guys um, along with Aulani. So anyway, um, anybody have any questions before we just jump into our work day? I had a question in the chat about rosters. Will we have yes. access to our rosters soon? Um, I, I have yet to have that conversation, but I will get them to you guys as soon as possible. I know that the, the um, numbers are capped out at 12. So it's kind of a, a cool, intimate number. Other questions before we go? Jeff? Yeah, you have the slides uh, for this. I didn't, are they, did you email them earlier? I'm sorry, okay, I'll get them. Yeah, mahalo. That's okay, I, I can give them to you uh -huh. again. 
it's okay. All right. Well, hey guys. Oh yeah. Oh, Eric, you found the unmute button. Yeah, I know. Eric, you're muted. Eric, you're muted. The um, you, you'll start. Yeah, it becomes a fear. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, uh, do we have room assignments or at least the buildings we're going to be in? Oh, mahalo for saying that. Um, I need you guys to email me um, which rooms you would like to use. Okay. Um, I think I know I will be in um, Yumi's room for the summer school office. Where can I find the list of? I'm gonna get you the list for the Huakai sites, um, but basically it's the standard like um, Kumuola, uh, Aina Yu. Um, I'll get that list to you. I think there's about seven sites, but that's not to say that you cannot take your class elsewhere. Okay, so I'll get you that list. I want to use Kilua. Is that your room? Michelle? Yeah. Um, if you guys want to also stay in your rooms, but Mrs. Ching and Ms. Mahuna, um, you guys might need to find a place unless you want to use your counseling center. So let me know. Just email me. Okay. There's a classroom next to us. Oh, yeah. Don't know what the I think is. Nathan might be using his classroom. So you're going to use one of the other classrooms then. Okay. All right. Did everybody sign in today so you guys can get your dollar dollar bills like how Mr. Manley is driven to the nice, nice. All right, you guys. Mahalo for your guys' hard work. And my why. Yeah. Why? Why bother you? Okay, so um yeah. Here ends our kickoff to Calvella 2021. Um, I hope we've set this up properly. Um, I'll stay on if you guys need. Other than that, have a great Saturday. Um, let me know if you need any help. Thank you, Alana. She's done. Okay, Jeff. Hey, hey Alana. Hey. Uh, do you know, um, you probably, it might be a roster question, but uh, mm -hmm. if I'm doing one section or two sections? I believe it's two, but I can double check on that um, because I got the the staff, um, the st your staff roster. So I can just quickly check on that. Oh, no problem. Appreciate that. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I'll, re I'll request um, Carl Smith Beach Park as an assumption of an uh, and to see if it gets approved. Yeah, I think, Emily, is that where you're going to be going to as well? Oh, I think she's off. Oh, Emily left? Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I think she's also planning on going there. There might be another KS site that she could go to because it's more, but I don't know. I, I'm not sure. We'll see what happens for, for her. Okay, yeah. wait, it's right here. Anna. Yes. If if we wanted to do Huakai to HCC UH Hilo, um, and also I think on our budget we put we set aside money for Makana like whenever we if we have a guest speaker or like how do we do that yeah. though? Like, I um, I want if you guys can just put that into your supply request form, and then just indicate Makana for like Mahalo gifts. Then um, I know in the past, Hala Kupu Kupu would just go ahead and make sure there was like a, a basket of things. Oh, and cool. so they would just give you. So I don't know if that's how it's going to work out, but I can check on the Makana for um, visits or guest speakers or whatever. Oh, okay. So let's, let's yeah. check. Again. Yeah. Makana. Just, it. yeah, just put it in there just, just in case. Okay, and then if you need, like, if you're going to get, like, notebooks or whatever for the kids, just order them. 
And then Ryan, um, it doesn't say, it doesn't indicate whether it's two classes or one class. So I'll, I'll double check that as well. Thank okay, you. Thank you guys for your time. Anything else, Donna? Can I, is that okay? Can we just use your pacing guide form? Oh my gosh, use it, use whatever. You can change it up. I don't care. I don't have feelings. You can not have to hurt me. <laughs> <laughs> this is all like, like, Paul oh, Jan, syllabus, pacing guide. This is new. Yeah, your guys' syllabus is going to look a little bit different though, yeah, because it's more like um, an introduction to college, right? So. Yeah, so yeah. But you it sounds like you guys have your own counseling standards anyway, so you can add those in there. Yeah, they had us working with a consultant this the past couple years and uh -huh. so you know what I can do is give you um an exam um an example of the syllabus so that you can just use it and then just delete and then that might be hang on, I can just get that to you real fast if you have time. Yeah, yeah we're here. Okay. Are you at work or are you at home? Jan and I are in our office. Oh, how cute you guys. It's easier. I cannot work at home. Mm. I, I'll be watching what everybody in my neighborhood is doing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, you that neighborhood lady. <laughs> yeah. I don't have Portuguese blood. I'm not Portuguese, but I act like one. He's bad. Kupuna's <laughs> <It's been laughs> status. And I watch what's going on. Oh, that's hilarious. Shy. Wow, what did you what did you get from um UPS? What did you get from that? <laughs> Look, she ordering again from Amazon. Yeah, sorry, I was uh, with, um, I just I edited our she said just put Makana for guest speakers on our budget. Yeah. So I did. If there's something specific that you guys want to order, just put it in there and then like you know, if you guys are ordering it from I don't know, basically books or something or wherever then just 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 say where as well okay. if not then we can so we'll just we can talk about that later where is the example yeah um what uh the if we wanted to do the whole kai like each holder what yeah you're just gonna have to follow the count the the county protocol for COVID. Okay. Yeah. Okay. I think it was, uh, ah! we could somehow split the group up. You get lost in my background, Jen. Can I just see? Oh my. Now you can get lost in my messy room. Alana, where are you at home? I'm at home. Oh. Well, um, it's ugly over here on campus, oh. and if they're having the whole Laolea drive-through and they the court sitting underneath the, the tent. I know, they should have had the court underneath. They're getting oh, the Hopefully they move ladies. them, because can you imagine them all in their nice um, oh. formal wear, sitting under That's a tent? Crazy. That's crazy. Raining. It's ugly in Hilo, so. That's crazy. Okay, what else we had to, not all the questions we had, Yeah, I cannot find my example for the syllabus, but I'll just email it to you. I'll email you the link so that you can just copy and paste it in there because it's easier to just use somebody else's format. Yeah, that's okay. why when I start using that, I'm like, oh, can we use it all up? No, yeah, here, you know what? I'm just going to give you like access to like Patricia's one. She does a good job with her with her um syllabus okay autumn tata that was like oh that was deep yeah um we're gonna have and i want to invite you because you're their counselor the 10th grade um we're, we're doing the poetry slam and so yeah. that's gonna happen um on may 13th during hoola at that um that cook that um the tent with the stage on it yeah. yeah if not yeah if not we're going to video it but it would be cool for you to be there okay. for their being their counselor so try check in the chat if you can open up um patricia's syllabus oh i think you asked